Hello, Amir Khan. Welcome hi. to Color of Life. Hi, hi. Thank yeah. you. So this is a real beard. This is by and large a real beard. So what you see from the coming of the skin is all real. So I had grown my own beard. Then we wanted a bit of length, and you know, so we added some uh, uh, extensions and all that. Yeah. Okay. So when uh, this is a little bit of an ageist question, mm -hmm. uh, you know, one time you're the heartthrob of the nation. Mm. QSQT is happening. You and Juhi Chawla. You and all the young here with Neelam. Mm. You know, there's a whole bunch of people. Mm -hmm. And and you know now suddenly you're this. Like this, uh, you know, this defining person whose every film becomes this thing that that something that people wait for. You're kind of this uh, elder statesman if one one wants to kind of oh. this. <laughs> I'm sorry for saying that. Yeah, but, it doesn't sit well but, on but my shoulders. Know, but you know what I mean. Right? Yeah, I know. It's like, how does the transition feel? It's like a, a you know that 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 at one time you're doing all these romantic roles and mm. you know having fun and then now you're you you're like Dangal for instance. You mm. know, you're like playing. The you know the father mm. or the you know like like a kind of a senior kind and, and there's also more responsibility on your shoulders because the the films that you've chosen raw mm. have also become more I won't say serious necessarily mm. no yeah but, they're not but, serious yeah 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 but, but I'm hoping but, they're entertaining yeah yeah they're very entertaining yeah. no and serious does not mean not yeah, entertaining yeah, yeah. but but they've also become more how do I put it uh, hefty mm. uh, in terms of uh, uh, you know what they say as opposed to camera mm, camera are you talking about. of uh, thugs of Hindustan just kidding. <laughs> I'm talking about Dangal. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> so, Just no, kidding. if you want to talk about Thugs of Interest. No, no, I'd rather not. Yeah, okay, all right. Yeah, so, yeah. how does it feel? Well, you know, it's it's been a journey and actually, to be quite honest, uh, as a person who started, uh, you know, quite young, I started at the age of 18 when I joined my uncle as an assistant. So, my journey is has actually started from there and quite honestly, I'm 57 now. I was 18, so in one more year, I'll, I would have completed 40 years in the industry. Yeah. Not as an actor, but in the industry, I would have completed 40 years because I worked for four years as an assistant first. So it's right. been, I think, 35 years almost now. And uh, I still feel that I do not feel that way. What you're describing is not how I feel. Yeah. I feel like I'm still very much 18 years old and I'm still excited about what I'm making and we're just trying to get it right. Yeah. That's all we're doing. Yeah. We're just trying to get, we're trying to be honest to the story and the material and the script and try to you know, bring it out as well as it can. Yeah. Bas, we are doing that. And each film is challenging, each film is a new film, each film you learn something new. And every film is a, comes with a new set of challenges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, you're you never the master. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I feel. Yeah. No matter how experienced you get. For example, now, uh, Lal Singh Chadda. As you rightly pointed out, I've been working for 35 years. After having worked for 35 years, I should find it reasonably comfortable to do a film. Yeah. It's very difficult. <laughs> Advait, you know, as a director, I mean, I hats off to him how he's taken this film and really, you know, brought it to shore. Probably been my toughest film. Right, yeah. right, right. Most right. challenging film. Yeah. Part of that question was also addressed to me because, you know, when I was in school, uh, Kama Se Kama Tak was a I'd blockbuster. Okay. And it was running for 25 weeks and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. like, it just, now, it feels like, you know, that... that like I'm still in school, yeah. Like just like you say, you feel you're still 18. I feel like, oh my God, where does time, where does time go? Where does time go? Yeah, you know, you're suddenly like, oh my God, I'm interviewing Amir Khan. Yeah. Just yesterday, it seemed like I saw him in camera. Like, okay, camera. Like, that was you know, partly addressed to yeah. me as well. Yeah, sure. You, know, you no, see, you grow, you know, when mm. when you kind of grow with an actor mm -hmm. over, over the ages. It took you a long time to acquire the rights, the rights yeah, for yeah. this for this. Uh, about eight years, yeah. About eight years. Mm. So you stuck to it. I mean, what, yeah. what took so much time? Was it the negotiations or? No. <laughs> well, you know, it's not nice to go into the details. Right. But we approached Paramount, of course, which is the company that owns the original, uh, who has made the original. Right, right. And uh, initially, um, I was not able to, you know, they said you can take any rights from us to remake because their sister com concern, Viacom, was actually helping us. I'm talking over 14 years ago. And uh, there was a different management then. Right. Not only in Paramount, but also in Viacom. At that time, for some reason, it wasn't working out. But I, being the kind of person I am, I persevered. I went and met various people. I flew to Germany, to Berlin, and met Spielberg with the hope that he might put in a word to, uh, you know, Mr. Zemeckis. They're very close. But anyway, it took us around eight years finally when, when, when we were given the rights. But something told you, I want to make this one. Well, I had never... I mean, I've seen Forrest Gump in 94 when it came out. Right. I saw it in the theatres. I remember loving it, so I saw it a couple of times uh, in a short span. <laughs> I had never imagined you can make this into a Hindi film. I had never imagined. And when Atul and I 
<clears throat> met and he is a close friend atul kulkarni uh, who is an actor and he and i did rangde basanti together so exactly 14 years ago in fact 14 years and a month so little more than 14 years ago it was in the month is we are in august it was in july 8th of july if i am not mistaken to be precise it was the a uh, premiere of a film that i had produced called jaane to ye jaane na mm-hmm. and we invited the whole industry and all of that at the end of that night a few of us were sitting in my house and that atul was one of them and we started discussing about films and he said what is your favorite film and i said one of them is forest gump the conversation got over i forgot about it two weeks later he calls me up and says that uh, i've written a script for you so i said but you're not a writer <laughs> he said yeah you're not a shot I said okay. He said, "I said, what have you written?" He said, "I've written an Indian adaptation of Forrest Gump." I said, "What? In two weeks?" He said, "Yeah." <laughs> He said, "My schedule got cancelled. I was supposed to go the next day after we spoke. The next day I was going for an outdoor. It got cancelled. So I was at home. I sat down and wrote it. So I didn't have high hopes from what he had written. And Atul is also a friend. And for some time I was busy. I said, "Ham, I'll hear it now soon." But since I was not having too much hopes, I was not really. following up with him rather he was following up with me and actually what happened is when i heard the script that's when i realized that that's when i started taking it seriously because when i heard the adaptation and the script that atul had written it just swept swept me off my feet i just I fell in love with it i just fell in love with it and then i said oh i have to i have to do this uh so at that time i wasn't thinking that you know oh my god you're taking a classic and you're trying to remake it yeah. i didn't even think of that i just thought that here is the material and i have loved it and i don't know how atul has done this but now what i'm hearing to me it feels like an indian film that's how good the adaptation is i would have not even known that this is an american right. film right. you know if you if i had not seen that it's a new film for me so i said i want to do this and then the journey began of trying to get the yeah, rights right, and all yeah, that yeah, yeah. yeah so it took us a while so one of the things that forest gump really did to america mm-hmm. was was when it was released was present a very idealized version of, mm. of america that 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 you didn't because you know wait Tom the Tom Hanks character mm. Forrest Gump represents mm. he's America like mm. you know like mm. that you don't need to be cutthroat or super intelligent or super talented to succeed mm. you can be very basically decent and kind hearted uh, and, simple. and and simple and and nice yeah. and you have core human values and also succeed do you believe in that personally I do I do and I think that is one of the things that attracts me to this material is that it's a story where we are used to watching our heroes and our protagonists have different kinds of strengths right. some of them are physically strong uh like the avengers series you know these uh, they are physically strong right. they can sometimes your hero is moral has got moral strength he fights for the underprivileged or he fights for right. people's rights but here is a hero who doesn't fight he doesn't have any great physical strength he just is a simple guy who's very innocent and he's very pure of heart he doesn't have any negativity and i wanted people to experience the power of innocence yeah. i'm using the word power it's not the way i want to use yeah. it yeah. but innocence brings so much with it right. that you don't need power after that <laughs> you know that's what i felt and I, this story really tells you that it's very it's a very positive film it makes you believe it makes you believe in the goodness of people it makes you believe in your own goodness right right you know it touches the good in you yeah, yeah and that's what i like about the the material yeah so uh, in the original uh, tom hanks is a southerner a mm. southern american he's from alabama mm. what made it feel right that this character should be a a sikh, a sikh? yeah well actually atul in his adaptation had already placed him as a sikh and all of that was already in place when we received it as a as a script we were already reading a sikh character we were already you know he was part of that script and so it was felt very natural to us right. so none of us questioned why is he a sikh it was very organic yeah. to us yeah. but now that i think about it it's probably atul probably placed him as a sikh because technically he could be anyone he could yeah. be a south indian it yeah. could be any character yeah. Yeah. very rightly said but i think atul did that because in our timeline of uh, you know recent socio political history in 83 84 that was a very key time that was a very um, difficult time i would say you know and and the sikh community went through a lot of uh difficulties at that time so by placing became making him a sikh i think what atul was trying to do and he did that i think rather well is that he gives uh by making the lead character a sikh you're actually investing your emotions very strongly in the character in the incident and then from there when the film goes on you know your 
I think that's why he made it a Sikh okay. character. I think nice. so. Now, there was a time when pan-India cinema basically meant Hindi cinema. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, movies like Aradhana and Yadon Ki Bharat and Your Own Kamata mm -hmm. Tak, as I just said, had Silver Jubilee runs in Chennai. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, they were the songs were hugely popular. Mm -hmm. But now there's, there's some kind of little bit of a reverse thing mm -hmm. is happening. Mm -hmm. Do you sense, is this as a movement or is it too early to comment on anything? Uh, it's certainly a movement, and I think that uh, uh, it won't. It it may not be a like a thick, solid movement how we are imagining it. Right. But I feel that with COVID coming in, with people not going to theaters, or rather they could not go to theaters, and so they were consuming entertainment at home through OTTs and other platforms, and as a result, all of us ended up seeing content from other languages. Right. You know, after some time, we started consuming content from other languages which we heard about, which yeah. we heard was good. And that is something new that happened. You know, suddenly I was also watching different languages films. And yeah. So similarly, the Hindi audience had started watching, I think, uh, films from the South and, and, and enjoying them, liking the characters, liking the action, you know. And I think in that time when these films came out, you know, it was all of that put together. Right. And of course, uh, I've not seen, uh, you know, RRR as yet, but these were films that obviously connected very deeply right. with an audience and really entertained them because otherwise you can't have this kind of success. Right. It's yeah. a huge success. Yeah. 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 Uh, so it's it's really nice to see that a Hindi audience is now open <laughs> for content. Because I used to always feel that a Hindi audience is not very open. You know, They don't watch films from other languages. But now they started doing that. And that's great to see yeah. that Hindi audiences are open to watching films from different languages and appreciating them and loving them. Um, you know, that's that's really nice to see that. Uh, it speaks well for the Hindi audience that they are, uh, you know, wanting to experience entertainment from different languages. I had said this in China also when I went there. When people ask me, the Chinese people are watching your films and all that. So they asked me, how about Indians? Do they watch Chinese films? So I said, not really. We, so far, of course, we do. We have, all of us are big fans of Jackie Chan. We've also liked, uh, you know, so we ha it's not that we haven't. Yeah, yeah. But it's not a regular thing. Yeah, especially the serious ones we've never Certainly seen. Certainly not in theatres where you have the biggest business of a film from India coming out of China. Yeah, that's not that's happened yet. Yeah, yeah. But that's happened of Hindi films in China. You yeah. know, the Chinese audience has been open enough. Yeah. So I said, you know, it's it speaks for the Chinese audience. Yeah. That as people, as, as people, they are open enough to receiving material from other cultures and falling in love with it. That's right. such a beautiful quality. Right. So I think that uh, as we go along, as you said, you know, do you see this as a movement? I said, as I, as we go along, I'm hoping that this happens more and more. Right. That we get to see films from Bengal, from Maharashtra, Gujarat, you know, which are different languages, but they are entertaining the whole country. Right. And and that's what will be lovely to see as as it goes along. Yeah. Mm. One of the theories is that the masala pan that was missing in Hindi cinema for a long mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. uh, audience was just starved for it, especially the the, the Hindi belt audiences. Sure. And that when I say masala pan, I did not, don't necessarily mean Amitabh punching one person and mm -hmm. sending him flying into the air, mm -hmm. but also the Salim Javid style of dialogues, the sure. rhetoric, the the slightly larger than life quality, Correct. the sentimentality, the melodrama, mm -hmm. the mother figure, all those things that made up what what like a mm. Divar, a Trishul or whatever of those movies. KJF in fact is very influenced by Correct. Divar and Trishul and all these films. Ah, I've not uh, seen In, in fact, okay. uh, the boy starts off by uh, shining shoes. Uh, you know, like uh, like, Bachchan. In, uh, like Bachchan in yeah, uh, Divar. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, that's the theory that, that the audience... That also is also true. Yeah. I agree with you. That is also true. I think in Hindi, we've also started making films. Perhaps a lot of us as creative people uh, are perhaps not so much in touch with what the larger mass of audience wants to uh, enjoys. Right. And as I agree with you, it need not be action. Like you said, it need not be action. Yeah. A film like Dangal has been uh, liked by a number of people across the world, in fact. Right, right. And there is no action, yeah, actually. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I mean, there's a sport. Yeah. Is The sport of wrestling is not used as action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a drama, essentially. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so you're right. I feel that if the story is universal, and I'll tell you what I mean by universal, by that I mean that Emotionally, it touches the hearts of a larger group of people who watches watches it. So, like you said, a mother-son emotion is a very, very deep-rooted emotion. Yeah. So, somewhere I think in Hindi cinema, also we as creative people have started selecting perhaps films which are more and more niche. Now, I feel that every filmmaker 
has a right to choose what he wants to make and of yeah. course he should make what yeah. he wants yeah. to make yeah. no questions asked but then we also should be aware that if i'm choosing the subject it is a niche subject i must be aware of that i must not imagine i'm making a mainstream film when actually i've selected a subject which is actually won't interest and the people will not must most of the masses may not even relate to this topic right right so that has been happening also you're right i i agree with that so when you see uh, like many movies flopping hmm. but a gangubai uh, kathiawari or a kashmir file succeeding hmm. so the the masses what it what the the audience is rather hmm. what is the kind of message that they're saying what are they saying like i want to see which kind of movie actually the audience is uh, is i think happy to see any kind of movie okay when you're promoting a movie you kind of tell them what it is suppose i've made a action film i will promote it as an action film you will see the trailer also so you'll come to know what genre it right, is right right but what i'm saying is irrespective of genre there has to be an emotional connect the universality would, yeah. emotional connect right. even an action film as an audience i won't be interested in an action film if there's just action happening you look at gajni it's an action film yeah. but why is the action happening yeah, yeah, yeah. it's happening because of a deep emotion that you feel as an audience of this real love story yeah, between yeah. kalpana and sanjay singhania and when kalpana gets killed the action is happening because of that yeah. and that i want to see as an audience because i'm upset that kalpana is yeah yeah has been absolutely, brutally murdered absolutely, like that yeah. so gajni is essentially a love story yeah the action is the second layer its heart is a love story kalpana is the heart of gajni yeah so i'm saying this is how you know i think south films and south filmmakers still have that you know they are very connected to their audiences perhaps we have lost that connection perhaps we need to relook at that yeah and the south films are teaching us that so uh, it's interesting that you just named the characters do you remember all the names of all the characters that you played quite a few of them yeah, yeah. i remember most of them do you remember the 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 one where you did with the juhi chala where you have this uh, snake charmer snake charmer oh my god <laughs> uh no i would not remember the name of that no <laughs> okay that's one of the film that's my my film my act my father produced and directed right mm it's not a film that i, I was very happy with so the films that i'm not very happy with i try to forget as soon as i can <laughs> now one of the things that makes a star a star whether it's it's a bachchan or the three khans or a shridevi or a madhuri dikshit or a, raj kapoor they want whatever is the theatrical pull that they have that's mm-hmm. pretty much what because they say that i can pull that you many fill pieces. seats you fill seats mm-hmm. or as the american say you put butts in seats mm-hmm. you know so that's the stardom Now, yeah that, that's one one of the ways to measure stardom measure stardom mm-hmm. yeah that's like like at whatever the thing is at least the first day goes like yeah. is really first weekend first, first weekend, day first day yeah. whatever mm-hmm. but now that 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 you know people the movies are kind of you know odt has come into play mm. you know there are a lot of people kind of going either way mm. do you think that kind of stardom that you guys enjoy that is not just you guys when i say you guys i mean you the previous generations skapella across, language. across languages you mean across languages across languages yeah. do you think it's going to become more difficult to see that magnitude of see star? that depends according to me we've been making a simple error you see when film there's nothing wrong with ott as a platform it's very nice and it will actually compliment cinema I'm not against it no 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 uh-huh. just hear my whole answer uh-huh. i'm saying that ott actually is not a challenge to cinema but we are making it a challenge to cinema what we are doing is we are saying that our films will release in theaters but you don't really need to come because in a few weeks you can see it at home right. how do you expect people to work, come to the theater how right. do you expect me to come to the theater when you already told me that just wait a few weeks i'm come i'm coming to your house you don't have to come to the yeah, theater yeah, yeah. that is the error that according to me the film industry is doing uh our films of course must come on ott and audiences should watch the film on ott also but we must give the audiences a clear choice if i want to watch a film in cinemas then i come to the cinema and if i don't want to watch it no problem right then i have to wait for 6 months for it to come to ott which is what is happening with uh, then at least the audience has a choice and say oh i don't want to wait 6 months i would rather watch it in the theater i may have heard good things now what happens is if it's a good as a film is very good and i come to know it's a great film and i'm told please watch it yeah. my answer today will be that it's okay i'll just wait for two weeks i'll watch it at home yeah. that should not be the case when a film is being appreciated when the film is being loved and it is in cinemas and then you tell your friend it's a great film go and watch it he must feel that if i don't watch it i will miss it yeah 
So I think that is one big factor in the collections of theatres dropping. Right. Not just in Hindi but in every language. The quicker you go into OTT, it doesn't make sense to me because you need to have a clear demarcation between the platforms. Right. You know, uh, and if that is not there, then common sense tells you that for economic reasons, for bandwidth reasons, for time reasons, because when you go to a theatre, you need time. Yeah. You need certain amount of money. You need certain amount of bandwidth to actually go there, book the ticket, and travel. If all of this is going to is all of this is required to come to a cinema, yeah. that is a given. Yeah. Then you cannot have it coming on OTT so fast. Right. If it's coming so fast, then cinema doesn't stand a chance. Right. Cinema doesn't stand a chance. So it's in our hands. As filmmakers, we have to decide. For example, I make sure that my films don't come on OTT for you know six months. I I try my level best to do that. For this reason only. So Dangal has not none of my films come in two weeks like that. And I'm trying to make that more and more, you know. And I'm hoping other people also do that because it's not just if one person does it, it doesn't work. The whole industry has to do the same thing. Audiences across the country should feel that because cinema is a different experience. Obviously, yeah. You know, you're watching in a dark space. There are people around you. It's a collective experience. You laugh together. You cry together. You cheer together. You know, as opposed to sitting and alone and watching it on your laptop or or on your phone also nowadays. Yeah. It's not the same. If I'm going to enjoy myself, then I have to ask myself: Will I enjoy myself on a five-inch screen, or will I enjoy myself on a large screen right. with the sound? <clears throat> we work very hard on the mixing. Yeah. You know, you know. Yeah. So it's it's the. I mean, I, I make films for cinema. cinema yeah. That's where you will experience my work at its uh, how it is meant to be experienced. Right. So I think that's a big difference as well. We sh we need to not have come on OTT so fast, or we can make a film directly for OTT. I don't mind. That's yeah. You yeah, can make yeah. it straight for OTT. Now, but if you're coming in theaters, then you have to have a distance. Now allow me to present a counter argument, mm. uh, uh, which may sound a little naive to you because I'm not a business. No, guy. no, sure, please tell. Uh, me. Uh, you're a big star, Amir. Mm. So people will pay big money for your for your movies, mm. even if they come. Six months after OTT, mm -hmm. but what I've been hearing from a lot of producers is that the later that they release on OTT, mm. when it's the second tier or third tier stars or whatever it is, the OTT price drops. the 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 price of the movie keeps dropping. They don't offer the kind of money that they do when uh, it's still hot, so to speak. The mm -hmm. film is still hot, so mm. to speak. So I think that's another reason that many films choose a shorter window uh, for what is your as uh, somebody who's been in this business for I a know, long but time. I don't agree with that. I'm okay. sorry. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. See, because a film does well based on how well you've made it. If a film connects with people, it'll do well. Okay. And if it's on OTT or on cinema, if it's a good film and I it connects with me, I want to watch it. Okay. If it's not available in cinema, I'll watch it on OTT. Right. And when the mouth of publicity spread that it's a good film, wherever it is showing, I will watch it. So I feel it's the quality of the film and how well we make the films that will finally decide everything. That's the bottom That's the line. Bottom. That is the bottom line. My bad film will not do well just because I have managed the number of weeks well. Right. It has to be a good film to begin with. Then the next decision comes about OTT, direct to theatre and all that. That's the next level. Right. So what happens is that if a film doesn't do well, most producers feel that okay, now that it's not done well, let me not hold on to another 12 weeks. Uh, let me, I'm getting some money, let me take the money and give it. Short term thinking. You okay. will get that money right now. But in the long term, you're harming yourself. And the industry. And the industry as a whole. So our ability to work collectively. You know, we are doing Pani Foundation. Me and Kiran and Satya, we work for the last six years. We're working in rural Maharashtra. And we're working in, in, in trying to help people with water and agriculture. The reason I'm telling you the story is that one of the key things that we as, as Pani Foundation do is we try to bring a village together. Because when a village comes together, it becomes strong. Right. And any problem in front of them, they are able to handle together, whether it's water or any other challenge. If they are together, they can handle it. And we've learned that. In Pani Foundation, we've seen that happening. It's the same thing. If something affects all of us, and I think only for myself, then that it's, won't help everyone. That, like you said, that short-term thinking. It's a short-term thinking. What is good for everyone is also good for me. Yeah. I have to understand that. Right. As an individual, not just in cinema, in life, I feel. Right. What is good for me 
may not be good for society. Correct. Right. So I must do what is good for society because eventually, what is good for society will also be good for me. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. what I feel. So when you embarked on this Lal Singh Chadha mm. uh, journey, mm. uh, there was a, you just said there was this gut feel that because you 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 heard Atul's script mm. and uh, it was it just affected you a great deal. Mm. Now after the whole movie is over and you've mm. seen it, that gut feel does that still stand? <laughs> So I'll tell you what I feel today, now that the film is complete and we are a few days away from the release. I have to say that when I heard Atul's script and or for that matter, us as a team, Adubayat being the director, me being the producer and the entire team, when all of us had this, just the script in front of us, then Adubayat and all of us had a certain vision of what the film sh would like, what we would like it to end up being. And that was the start of the journey. Today, we have come to the end of the journey. When I look at the film, I think that what we set out to make, yes. we've come quite close to that. Nice. I'm very happy that Adwait as a director, though he's a young guy, he's just made, this is his second film, it's a tough one. Yeah. But despite that, he's managed to bring in the ship <laughs> quite well. And I think all of us as a team are very, look up to him as a person who has led us in the right direction and he's brought, uh, he's, he's made a film which all of us feel is very close to what we wanted to make. So we're very happy about that. Now, of course, we are waiting to see if the audience is interested in what we wanted to make. Right. We'll get to know in a few days. How do you how do you do this, Amir? How do you consistently or almost always consistently pick relatively untested, unknown talent and and kind of identify a spark in them that was not visible earlier, but in your film somehow it's magnified. Uh, I don't want to name names, but I think you know some what I'm talking about. You know, you relatively. Unknown directors, uh, relatively. Oh, okay, unknown. directors, yeah. Hmm. Well, uh, when I'm selecting, uh, you know, films, one of the things I look at is, of course, the script. It has to, you know, connect with me. But one of the key things I look at is who is the director. Right. I give a lot of thought and importance to the fact that this director is the person who's going to lead this process. And that's a very important decision for me. If I'm not comfortable with the director, if I don't feel safe with the director, then I tend to hesitate. Okay. But for me to want to work with a director or to completely trust a director, I don't need the director to be 10 films old. No, that's what I'm Or yeah. should have given 20 hits. No, I, if, I feel that you, you, if I feel you're capable of telling the story and narrating this well, and if I have that confidence, that's good enough for me. So in my career, I've worked with a lot of newcomers, yeah, new, yeah. new directors. Yeah. There's John Math Matthews, the Farhan Akhtar Dilchata was the first yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lagan, Ashutosh, uh, while that was not his first film, that was his first film that actually launched him into his career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was his third film, I think. Yeah. Uh, so yes, I have worked with a number of you know new directors. Untested is what I would like to say. Yeah, Untested, yeah. yeah. But I, I test them. <laughs> I you, make sure. You make, give them an exam? No, no, nothing uh, like that. Uh, it's just by talking to the person. You know, I spend a lot of time with the people I'm about to work with. And when I get the confidence, I go for it. You once had a Mahabharat project. Dream. I had a dream. Dream. Okay. Yeah. You wanted <laughs> not to kind of started the project. Yeah, 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 yeah. But now, given that this is the season of mega projects mm -hmm. in every possible language, mm. everyone wants to go pan India, and the budgets are just out there. Do you think it's time to redream the dream? It feels like it's the right time, but you know. Mahabharat, you cannot time it at all. It has to be beyond that. When you're making Mahabharat, you're not making a film. You're doing a yagna. And you have to approach it like that. You don't approach it like you're making a film. It's not a film. It's much deeper than that. And I don't know whether I'm ready for that. <laughs> so, let me see. But it's something that really excites me. Nice. So, you still... It's there, some corner yes, of your mind. Yes, yes, it is very much there. Right. But uh, I'm afraid to bring it out into the fore because I don't know whether I'm ready. See, Mahabharat will never let you down. You might let Mahabharat down. <laughs> okay. So I don't want that to happen. Right. Yeah. So I hope that that uh, Lal Singh Chadha is another success for you. But, uh, you know, you've also kind of at times gone wrong in your calculation. Sure. Like in sure. Thugs of Hindustan. Yes, yes. Uh, so, when that happens, do you kind of have this enormous process of what went wrong? Oh, yes. 
I, I give a lot of thought to what we what went wrong, what, what because you see, a, a film that doesn't work is an opportunity. It's a great opportunity to learn because when you make mistakes, you learn you learn exactly what has gone wrong, and you know it's so all. I'm wherever I am today. It's not because of my successes. It's because of my failures. In the early years of my career, I don't know whether you're Tum aware. Mere ho. Tum mere ho was the name of the film. Yeah. But you asked me the name of the character. Okay. Yeah. Tum mere ho, I remembered, but you I asked me the character. Okay, I suddenly remember the name of the yeah. film. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Suraj, is the character called Suraj? I think so. Yeah. Just I look up know. online. If I'm not mistaken, Tum mere ho, the character is called Suraj. That would be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I hold my failures very close to my heart, and because I have, those are the ones that I've struggled the most. Those are the ones I've not succeeded. Those are the ones in which I've, you know. Uh, Shiva, sorry, it was some S I knew. <laughs> Suraj Shankar close Shiva, enough. Shankar Shiva. After so Shiva. many years, close yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But uh, and you did say that you like to forget the films that you, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but but failures really teach you a lot, and I think that um, so I value my failures a lot. And uh, regarding Lal Singh, I mean, we'll get to know now. But I feel that I'm just hoping that it's a film that you know touches people's hearts. Uh, in the way that it has touched our hearts when when we were making the film, nice. And if that happens, I'll be happy. <laughs> yeah. So really looking forward to the film. Yeah. I'm watching it on an IMAX screen. Okay, thank you. Uh, because uh, you know, just the, the the one of the things that really appealed to me about Forrest Gump was how it kind of took the scenic route and went all yeah. over America. And yeah. you've done this whole Kashmir to Kanyakumari thing. Yeah, it's it's a large screen experience. Large screen, yeah. I think so, it's a large so screen. I think experience. I want to see it on a larger screen. Great. I hope so, you like it. Thank you so much. Yeah. And all the best. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks. you.